Hey guys, back with another informative video for you. And this week I'm talking about flexible dieting and does it affect your micronutrients? So one of the big criticisms of flexible dieting or if it fits your macros has been, well, okay. We look at the information out there and it's pretty conclusive that it's, not, it's, it's just as good as restrictive dieting in terms of fat loss. Um, but when the flexible dieting haters or IFYM haters come out, typically their rallying warrior cry is, but what about overall health? And they always cite, well, what about micronutrients? Certainly micronutrient density and fiber content of foods has to be affected. It's always typically like this. There has to be some kind of unquantifiable magic component to food that causes you to just be healthier. Um, that's not true. Foods made up of chemicals, all foods made up of chemicals and the components of which will determine, I don't want to say how healthy that food is because that it's not that black and white, but essentially if for some reason flexible dieting is a more unhealthy lifestyle, we should be able to see defined differences in the nutrient contents of these diets. Well, a recent study, which was, uh, there was a great synopsis of it in mass this month, and I'll, I'll put the link to it here below in the description. Uh, the, this study examined bodybuilders who were competing, males and females, and looked at the differences in their, in their um, one, their macronutrient intakes, and two, uh, their micronutrient intakes with either a flexible dieting model or IFYM model or a meal plan model, you know, a restrictive dieting model of quote unquote clean foods. They found some really interesting results. What they found was in the males, there was no difference, uh, even in, with, macro, with regard to macronutrient intake, with regards to um, micronutrient intake, there was really no difference there. I think vitamin K, there was like a little bit of a trend for it to maybe a little, little bit higher in uh, the restrictive group. What's really interesting is in females, the restricted group females consumed less calories on average and less protein, and they were much lower in certain micronutrients. I'll say that again. The quote unquote clean eating group was lower in protein, calories, and several micronutrients, okay? Uh, they were lower in vitamin K, vitamin E, uh, they had a trend for being lower in folic acid, uh, iron, they were lower in vitamin C, uh, and, and several other micronutrients, I think phosphorus, uh, sodium, magnesium, were all lower, okay? Then the flexible dieting group, they were lower. Eating clean, they were lower. Interestingly, fiber was also lower in the restrictive dieting group. Now, what does this study tell us? Well, what it tells us is, at least in the male group, and it's probably because their, their, their macros weren't different. Okay, so their macros between restrictive and non-restrictive weren't different, and so we didn't see differences really in these micronutrients and fiber. Okay, but in the females, these kind of uh, nutritional voodoo practices of having to stick to quote unquote clean foods, um, we saw a lot of differences. And females are probably the most responsible for really terrible dieting practices. Um, I think because they're probably more subjected to dieting earlier in their lives. Um, and so we really saw some poor dietary habits in the uh, restricted dieting group in terms of their micronutrient intake. Now, why might this be? Well, one, they're on lower calories, lower protein, but more than that, because you know the calories were about, I would say a 20% difference, but some of the micronutrients were like half of the flexible dieting group. So I think one of the reasons is that when you're eating a restricted diet of only certain foods, um, you're not getting a lot of diversity in your diet and it's going to be hard to hit those micronutrients. In fact, there was a pilot study done at uh, Ohio State University. I think Eric Trexler was involved in it and they looked at people who ate paleo 
versus people who flexible dieted and found that while paleo people had very high levels of certain micronutrients, they also were almost frank deficient in other micronutrients, whereas the flexible dieting group had a better spread of micronutrients. And it makes sense if you think about it. You're eating a greater variety of food, it's more likely you're gonna have a greater variety of, ma of micronutrient intake. I think what this says is that for the most part, uh, flexible dieting certainly isn't worse for body, body composition. We've shown that if macronutrients are equated. It certainly is not worse for micronutrients. If anything, in females, it's better. And if you're looking at uh, Bill Campbell and Lauren Conlon's study, what you find is the people who flexible diet post contest actually gain back their muscle faster and fat, and they don't gain back as much body fat, okay? So I think what this says is it's kind of a little bit of do what you want, but just like with training, with training when we use more flexibility in training, like variety, like with DUP, or flexible DUP, we get better results. It seems when we use more flexibility in diet, we get better results. So that's it, I'll put the link to the study as well as to the article in mass below. You guys can check that out. If you guys enjoy this content, like and subscribe and share it. Also, check out my Make America Science Again shirts at my shop below, and I'll check you guys next time.